Hello, cigar fans, and I hope soon to be umbrella fans. Welcome to our shop, Davidoff of London, here in St. James's. I've been going through many of your comments on the videos we've produced so far. Firstly, thank you for taking the time to comment on them. Thank you for watching the videos. But of course, there have been some requests that have come through what you'd like to see in future content. Unsurprisingly, the backdrop of a few of our videos, our own as well as with Kirby, have been framed not just by Winston Churchill himself, but by this gorgeous array of umbrellas you see behind me. Many of you have asked a little bit of conversation about that. What are they? What is the story of the umbrellas? So let me begin how we started to stock the umbrellas and a little bit more about the umbrellas themselves. So if we go back to approximately 1980, maybe even 81, my father had just opened this store and one of his frequent visitors commented, why don't you stock umbrellas? And my father replied, well, we're a cigar shop, we're a tobacconist, that's why we don't. And he observed that traditional tobacconists, in England at least, always had a stock of umbrellas and walking sticks, so we should. That intrigued my father. He got in touch with Fox Umbrellas, and in short order, we had a small selection in the window, some beautiful umbrellas. It started with a few, and this is going back 42 years perhaps. We have gone from strength to strength, both on umbrella variety, umbrella sales, walking sticks, of course. But in particular, it is the umbrellas that I have held very close to my heart. And we have had the privilege and the pleasure to work with Fox Umbrellas throughout that entire period. So, who are Fox Umbrellas? Those of you who don't know, they're perhaps the last true British manufacturer of gorgeous handmade umbrellas. They can trace themselves back to, I believe it's the 1860s, um, and their factory today is based in Croydon. I had the pleasure of visiting them a few weeks ago, and to see the work that goes into each and every umbrella is extraordinary. To an amateur eye like my own, who values craftsmanship and, of course, the artisanal elements that go into a cigar and related accessories, that is echoed with these amazing umbrellas. So much of the skill, the manual dexterity that you see in the rollers in Cuba or in Dominican Republic, the care, the attention to selecting the parts that make up the cigar, you see it with these umbrellas. And I had uh, the tantalizing opportunity to start to customize an umbrella for myself, which, by the way, is a rabbit hole you don't want to go down because it never ends. But if you have the means, it's a wonderful way to, to pass some time and spend a serious amount of wedge. Now, how do you come about selecting an umbrella? What are you looking for? It's a question I get asked frequently. Well, of course, there's a need for an umbrella. We live in a climate lends itself to the rain. However, not all umbrellas are made the same. Most people get by with an inexpensive, perhaps free umbrella they've picked up from a hotel. I'm partial to those myself. Anything free is wonderful. However, it's not going to be your steadfast companion for very long. The wind, the rain, corrosion, if not theft, is going to take care of that relatively quickly. So perhaps you decided now's the time to add a more permanent umbrella to my own collection of sartorial accessories. In the past, it would have been gentlemen, but today it's ladies, gentlemen. I don't think there's a distinction there. Everyone needs a very well-made umbrella. And you can customize the color, the feel, the height. You can play with all the little details and make it a uniquely personal expression of your personality. So, we get an usual customer that wants to come in 
and get maximum coverage from an umbrella, what am I going to recommend? So for the person who comes in, the maximalist, they want an enormous umbrella, the biggest they possibly can get without spending a fortune. What are they going to get? Well, let me show you. You will all recognize these. These are what we call golf umbrellas. But of course, when Fox Umbrellas makes them, they're more than just a golf umbrella. They are beautifully constructed, relatively lightweight for the size. This particular one is a straight handle. The wood on this one is a chestnut. It's got a little collar here. Notice the attachment for the canopy. It's not an elastic. The elastic can sometimes loosen. This one is a fixed attachment. So we open that. Delicately open it all the way. And you can see what a canopy. Look at that. That's going to cover you beautifully. It's not going to be too heavy. And it will give you a very durable construction. Now, I just want to draw your attention to something on this umbrella. These, which we call the ribs, you can see there's two pieces to them. We call that twin rib. We'll get on to why that's important shortly. The reason they're important is strength. However, it comes at the cost of weight. We'll come on to that. By the way, I'm going to show you how to put the umbrella back together properly. I won't do it with this one. So, you want the umbrella, but that might be too big for you. It looks too casual. It's a sporting umbrella, suitable for the golf course. You want something more permanent, something more suitable to a well-attired wardrobe. Well, the next step, something like this. Color, of course, can be chosen by you. Most people go with the black canopy. But I want to show you this, this gorgeous mint color. The features of this umbrella are a wooden handle, of course. In this case, I believe it's a malacca handle. That's a beautiful, lightweight, but strong piece of wood. You can see the end there. And as we open this, they can be customized for length, by the way. You, you can see you have a decent coverage here. This will keep you relatively dry, perhaps not the tips of your shoes, but on a normal day, it'll work very well. On a steel body, there we have it, and the framing, the furniture. This is all made from steel, hand attached, of course, but notice you have single ribs here. So this would be the classic gents or ladies umbrella, not heavy, beautifully put together, and most importantly, an umbrella that can furl back to a very concise, slim form factor. That is actually important for many people, not just in the military for parades, but also in day-to-day -day life. And I'd like to take this moment to illustrate what I mean. What, what do I mean by a well-furled umbrella? Well, when you buy a new umbrella, it's beautifully compact. Every, every leaf tucked in beautifully. However, when you start using it, you may not know, and you end up getting bits folded underneath or incorrectly aligned. And then eventually they get pressed in that position and it doesn't look so good anymore. So always take care. When you've used your umbrella, First and most importantly, let it dry. If you can leave it open, even better, but certainly let it dry. Then, holding it from the tip here, make sure each one of these segments is out, not tucked in. This looks pretty well done. And then, from the top, gripping slightly, applying some pressure, Rotate, I always go clockwise. And you can see by applying the pressure carefully, it's forming back into a very slim 
elegant profile. And as you work your way down, you will approach the attachment point here, the clasp, and just before you pass it, just beneath it, take that opportunity to reattach the clasp. There we go. Ignore the tag. And what do we have here? We have an umbrella that's been, if not beautifully, certainly very well furled again, looking almost like new. So there we have it. This would be the classic and probably the most popular umbrella people buy. Relatively well priced, not extremely expensive, certainly not cheap, but remember, quality comes with a price. Very easy to carry around. It can be used to tap out your walk like a metronome. Most people will have what's called the metal ferrule. Umbrellas are built with that, so that it'll be very resilient. It won't crack when you use it on a pavement. Some people might even put a little rubber tip on it, but this is the typical umbrella. Now, very similar to what we just saw, but for me, in one of the most elegant finishes you can get, we have a wangy handle, and this gorgeous construction on the same steel furniture running all the way through. This particular one is a dark green canopy. But for me, one of the most elegant, distinguished handles you can pick is this Wangi. Very, very lightweight. You may recall the Charlie Chaplin films. He would have had a walking stick made of Wangi, slimmer profile, and it's extremely resilient. It's flexible, lightweight, and has that lovely personality to it. By the way, to get these handles in this shape is a craft and art in itself. That's done by master woodworkers outside of the Fox factory, but still the most discerning ones. So this would be a step up, perhaps. To get a wangy handle, you're adding 30, 40 pounds to the price of the umbrella. You're getting close to about 200 pounds here, but it's beautiful and distinguished and unlikely you're gonna come across someone else with a very similar umbrella. Now, where, where, where do you go from there? You know, you've, you've seen some beautiful umbrellas. All of them are characterized by the steel construction with a wooden handle attached. Well, the next step up is to have wood construction. So the body, the tube that runs through the body of the umbrella is made of wood. And there's two steps to that. The first step is beautiful. However, worth distinguishing, this is wangy again. The body itself is also wangy. However, it has what's called an invisible seam, invisible join. So it's essentially two pieces of wood, the handle and the body, attached in a very discreet fashion. That gives you a little bit more strength. Of course, more body, if that's the right way to describe it, to the umbrella. As we pop it open, you can observe how gorgeous that is. Look at that. It looks like a walking stick. By the way, that little rubber piece there is to keep the spokes together. It's a very elegant fastener, essentially. Look at that. All these details are hand finished and handmade indeed. So this is a little bit stronger. This is a step up in the world of umbrellas. This is something that says you have the means, but also you love umbrellas. See someone with one of these, they put a lot of thought behind it. Um, to give you an idea, price wise, it's several hundred pounds, three, four hundred pounds. Um, but it's an investment that unless it's stolen, will be with you for the entire part of your life and perhaps even your children's. They can eventually be refurbished by Fox. And I suspect the umbrella will often outlast the owner. Next step up from that, and it's not really a significant step up, it's maybe a sideways step, slightly diagonal, is to go full solid body. What do I mean by that? Well, let's have a look at this. This is a good example. So this is a solid oak umbrella. This is a 
walking stick, a solid walking stick made of oak with a canopy attached. Doesn't get any stronger than that. Well, actually it does. I rephrase that. There's only one step up from that. We'll come on to that in a moment. But this will last two lifetimes, dare I say. And again, absolutely beautiful. What is different to even the wangi, which was attached, is there is no invisible seam. It is one piece of wood delicately tapering away. Again, you've got a substantial ferrule at the tip there. That's going to survive most uh, pavements and sidewalks. And this umbrella, although it looks significantly more solid, it's not that much heavier. This is one I always aspire to. I'm very proud to say I have one now. And then, where can we go from there? Well, I have to show off. This is an umbrella that we had the distinct pleasure of stocking for the 100, and, I believe it was the 150th anniversary of Fox Umbrellas. That's memorialized with a sterling silver collar here. This is a solid walnut umbrella. You don't often get walnut being used as the wood for the, uh, for the umbrella. Obvious reasons, it's quite rare, quite expensive. But there's a further distinguishing feature on this. And it's the first time I'd seen it on a solid body umbrella. I'm sure it's been done before, but it's the first time I saw it and I fell in love with it. This has a twin rib construction. So you immediately feel it when you pop it open, much more resistance. There we go. And if you observe inside, what I spoke about previously about the golf umbrella, that twin rib construction, which brings, brings strength, it's here. So you're doubling up on the furniture inside, the support for the canopy, the attachment to the framing. This umbrella will last perhaps through war. It's gorgeous. It's a little bit heavier in the hand, a little bit tighter when you're opening it and a little bit firmer when you're closing it. But for me, this is the non plus ultra of umbrellas. I haven't actually used this one. This one is number 16 of 150. The reason it's number 16, that's my birthday. And I've kept it, I hope, for a very long time. I don't ever intend to sell it. And it will be in the family, maybe with my children one day. And for me, that's as good as it gets. So perhaps to recap slightly, you can go from the very lightweight, steel framed, single rib umbrellas, tightly furling, all the way through to something like this, or even the very large golf umbrellas, which are much more affordable, but perhaps aren't as beautiful. And allow me to say, once you get one, it's very, very difficult to resist getting the next one in a different color. And when I visited Fox Umbrellas Factory, my eyes were further opened to all the customization options that are available. You can do all sorts of things. You can add horn, you can add different ferrules, including horn ferrules. You can put inlaid horn on the handle. You can put mother of pearl, like you have here on the button attachment. Um, you can play with the tips. You can do different sided canopies, different colors, different textures. Um, so many options that you can pick. That is very well done on Fox's own website. So please do check them out to see what you can do. Uh, if you are in St. James's, please do come and visit us. We have quite a wide range and array of umbrellas here. Always delighted to talk about them and bore you to tears, as you've probably noticed. We hope you're always well covered with an umbrella. We hope you never lose an umbrella. And thank you for your patience and for your viewing. All the best.